All right, so this is another NMR explanation video, um, and this is another requested NMR explanation video, so thank you very much to Lawrence for requesting this video. So what this is, this is sort of a, an interesting video, uh, interesting problem that, that's, that's being asked here. So what we, we have is we've got a chemical reaction between salicylic acid and then three different alcohols, methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol. And then they're going to form a mixture of products, it's methyl product, ethyl product, and 2-propanol or isopropyl alcohol, um, isopropyl uh, product. And this NMR is supposed to be a mixture of all three of these products. There's also going to be some other peaks in here as well that we'll, we'll identify. But we're going to have to sort of identify as best as we can what these different products are. You'll have to excuse me. I've got a, a little bit of a cold right now. Um, so we're going to identify as best we can what these products are and then what percentages they were formed in. So relative percentages to one another. So the first thing that I'm going to sort of be looking at is what the NMR solvent is. So right up here it tells us that this is a proton NMR and that the solvent is CdCl3. Now CdCl3 should not show up on the proton NMR because right, it's deuterium, but there is going to be a residual solvent peak. Some of that CdCl3 that you use is actually going to be chloroform, CHCl3. Um, and the residual solvent peak for this, you can just look that up, um, is going to be right here. So this is going to be solvent. Um, so that comes at, you know, this is about 7.29 maybe, something like that. Um, that's where that solvent peak is. I was also told that this peak here, we can ignore this peak. So let's put X's through those. Now we don't need to pay attention to them. Um, and I was told that this is DCM, but this, you guys can't see the, I'll have to move this up for a little bit. Um, this isn't exactly where I'd expect DCM to come in, in chloroform. Uh, it should be more around 7. Um, but this is what the, the, you know, student told me. So we can assume that it's something we don't need to worry about. It, it is some impurity. Um, so we're just going to ignore that problem. So it could be DCM, uh, but not exactly where I expect DCM to come. Um, but it, it could be, you know, some other solvent. So it's, it's fine. We don't need to worry about it. So looking at this, this NMR then sort of what's left, I think very clearly these three peaks out here, um, around 11, those are going to be my OH peaks, my phenol peaks, um, on my different products. So each one of these is going to correspond to each one of these. Now, it's really hard for us to tell from this point um, which one is which, right? So we're not going to be able to, to do that, that yet. But once we do, once we figure out which one of these is A, B, and C, then we can use the integrations to figure out what the relative you know, percentages are. But first, we would need to figure out which one is A, B, and C. Now, looking at this other region, I can sort of see, start picking things out. And the first thing that I might look at is, well, in A, I should have a methyl group. I should have a 3-high group that is a singlet. So this CH3 bonded to C, so this is an ester, so C double bond O bonded to O, and then this methyl group. So this methyl group, it should be, you know, a pretty high, uh, and it should be a singlet. So out of my, my peaks in this region over here, the one that fits the bill very nicely is this peak here at about four. Um, that's, I think, very clearly going to be from this methyl group. So this integration of 24.9852, um, that's a pretty big integration. So right away, I'm sort of thinking to myself, well, this integrates to three, and one of these should integrate to one versus this integration of three. So I think that right away, I can say that this tall peak here, that's also going to be for this methyl uh, product because I've got my methyl group here should integrate three to one. So this OH should only be one third the height of this big uh, methyl group. The integrations that were given 24.9 and then you know a third of that would be close to eight uh, and we've got something that integrates to 7.7 .7 here. So I think that we can identify this peak as belonging to A. In the aromatic region, each one of these should give four signals, four different signals um, in the aromatic region, and all of these are going to be mixed together. So all of these peaks that we're seeing in the, in the aromatic region, I would expect all four of these to be mixed together, um, and we could worry you know, about trying to identify those, but I, I think it's just not really worth our time. Um, all four of these peaks, they're going to be the aromatic region peaks, and they're all going to be mixed together. So. If, if someone wants me to go into more detail with that, we can try to, to pick those out a little bit better. But um, I think that it's safe to say this is the aromatic region. 
it's a mixture of all of those, um, you know, and, and we don't really need to spend too much time worrying about that. So let's, let's move to B then. So for B, I should have an ethyl group, so CH2, CH3. And if you remember in, in some previous videos, we talked about ethyl groups and how we have a very common motif for ethyl groups. This methyl group at the end should integrate to a three-high triplet uh, because it's being split by the CH2, the methylene linker. The CH2, it should split into a uh, two-high quartet. So you see, sort of see that, that common motif, you've got a quartet over here, um, and then you've got a triplet over here, and it would integrate to two to three. So very clearly, I see a quartet here. That we can assign to B. And I've got this integration of 8.4516. Now I've got three choices over here, and this peak here, the, the one most upfield, to me this looks like a doublet. So it does not look like a triplet, it looks more like a doublet, um, so it's probably not that peak. This peak very clearly I think is a, is a quartet, um, and you might get confused, you might think that this, this peak goes with this peak, um, but what I would do, and what I did actually, is I said, well, let's take the integration for this peak, which is very clearly the methylene linker, 8.4516, and let's multiply that by three divided by two. Because whatever this value is, that should really be what the integration for our you know, methyl group is. Uh, now, the number we get, 12.6774, is definitely closer to this 11.5027 than 20.6093. These integrations are not gonna be exact, um, but I think it's safe to say that this broad peak uh, is probably that triplet and just the coupling did not get, you know, uh, it was too fine of coupling or just didn't get uh, drawn out uh, as nicely as we'd like to see. But I think we could safely say that this B peak, that's gonna be our ethyl peak. Um, now at this point, again, we could try to figure out or try to decide, well, which of these OH peaks belongs to our ethyl groups. And again, we can look at this integration. So this B peak should integrate to two equivalents, essentially, right? Um, and then, because it's a CH2 group, and then the OH should be about half of that, right? If this is a one uh, integration, this should be a two integration. So if I could find a, a peak out here that integrates to about half of this uh, CH2 linker, that should identify that as, as B as well. So the one in the middle integrates to about four, so 3.9285, that's about four. Uh, double that, that should be eight, and we've got that peak here. So I think very clearly, again, this peak here should be our B peak. So let's move on to C. So for C, I'm gonna use this black pen, and for C, we've got an isopropyl group. So an isopropyl group, um, maybe we'll just draw a little picture here. Is going to be like that. So then this is going to be our O, you know, and then the rest of the molecule. So what I'm looking for would be a six high doublet. So these methyl groups, they're going to be chemically equivalent. Um, and so they should be a doublet. Uh, they should be six high. And then they should also be a doublet because of the CH group here. And then we're going to look for a one high septet that's being split into seven different peaks by these methyl groups. So right here, it's sort of hard to see. But if we sort of zoom in, um, we can see this little, little peak here that should integrate to relatively one, right? Um, and it should be split into a septet, which is what we would expect. Uh, so I've seen a lot of little peaks there. So we'll label that as C. So that's really going to be this uh, CH group right there. And then over here, so roughly six times as high as this, this peak here, um, I, should, I should find my doublet. So I'm going to call this C right here. So I've got a doublet there. You know, this is about 1.5. You multiply that by six, you get something close to 10, roughly. Um, so we can call it that is C. Now over here in my OH group, then that means that this last little peak here, that would correspond to C, my two propyl product. So at this point in time, we've sort of labeled everything except for this peak right here. And this peak right here that's coming at about 1.5, it looks to me like it's a quartet. Um, and I don't have a good explanation for this peak. I, I really uh, am not sure. I thought about what other um, impurities could be in this sample. 
uh, you know, do any of their starting materials? Would, would those lead to something like this? And I, and I really honestly just am not sure what this is. Uh, I think that we can still solve the problem. Um, we can still do the calculations we need to do. But this peak here, I don't have a good explanation for. Uh, this peak here, again, I was told it was DCM. Um, it, it could be, I guess, but the, the sh chemical shift where it's coming at does not exactly make sense for DCM, so I'm, again, a little bit hesitant about that, um, that as well. But in any case, the next part of the question says, can we find the percent, the relative percents uh, of each of our products? And the way that I would do that is I would add up the integrals for all of my species. So one plus 3.9285 plus 7.7041, gives us 12.63. That 12.63, that's sort of the, the sum, the total for all of these integrals. So if I want to find the percent of A out of my total, I would take 7.7041 divided by that total. Multiply that by 100, 60.98%, or we could say, I guess we could round that to 61%. So A, I would say, is 61.0%. And I'll do the same thing for B and C. So for B, 3.9285 divided by that total. So for B, that gives us, and multiply by 100 just to make it easy to visualize, 31.1%. And we can do the same thing for C. So for C, it's going to be 1 divided by, go back up and get that percentage, 7.9%. So C... Let's draw one over here, 7.9%. And these percentages, they should all add up to 100%, right? So that's gonna be the relative ratio uh, for our products. Now we could also do a similar thing for the peaks that we see uh, in this region. So we've got more peaks that we can do similar type calculations for. So for A and B and C, we've, we've all got you know, peaks here. Now what's different about doing this, this sort of treatment in this region is that the uh, B peak here, that should integrate to two, relative to A peak should integrate to three, and the C peak should only integrate to one. So we would need to sort of standardize or take that into account um, as we're doing this process. The way that I would do that, and I don't know that this is totally necessary, but it's just an interesting thing to do, I would standardize each of these to one, essentially. So if this is, is re represented two peaks, I'm going to find what um, you know, area would be for one peak. So the way I'll do that is just take 8.4516 and I'll divide that by two, the number of protons. So that sort of changes this number, not really changes, but standardize it. So we'll write it maybe up here. B is going to be, the integral should be 4.4516. 2258, and I guess I should make it so you guys can see that as well. Um, we'll, we'll show you in a second. Uh, for A, we'll do A on top, I guess. I'm going to take 24.9852 and divide that by 3. Um, divided by 3 again because there's that's 3 proton equivalents. So this becomes 8.3284. And then for C, C is already sort of uh, standardized, right? Because C is only for one proton, this one proton here. So we can just use that number of 1.6083. Uh, so now that I've standardized all of my integrals to one, essentially, I'll do the same treatment that I did over here uh, to find the new percentages for this. So let's go ahead and total those. So uh, we've got that number plus that number plus 1.6083. So my total here is 14.1625. And then I'll find the percentages, the relative percentages for all of these, just like I did before. So 8.3284 divided by the total multiplied by 100. And these should be very close um, to what we saw before, 58.8%. We'll do the 4.2, the B next, divided by my total. Um, oops. We've got, so we should keep the colors all nice, 29.8%. 
And then for our last one, 1 1.6083 divided by my number times 100. And we end up with 11 point round of 4 percent. And again, these should, oops, that should be in black. Oh well. Uh, these should again uh, add up to 100 percent. And they should be very similar to the numbers that we got over here. Now, you, you do see some differences, right? Um, and those differences are really going to be due to the fact that these integrals are not going to be exact. Um, there's different tri tricks that you can use to, to get your integrals to be, you know, a little bit more exact. But I think that this is a good, um, a good answer for this. If I was going to present my answer, I guess I would, I would do the range. I would say that C, you know, might be from 7.9% to 11.4%. There's going to be some error there. You, you could also average your numbers. I think that's a, another good thing. You could average your numbers out um, to give you, you know, the average of, of A and B and C. But I think these are either one is really, is really valid. Um, I would probably go with these uh, because the integrals are probably a little bit tighter. Uh, there's less room for error. So I think these answers are better. But this was just sort of a, an interesting thing that I thought we could do as well. All right. I hope that that helps.